Director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Mr. Kamal Maharaj, educator and CEO and founder of the Vishwa Shakti, Shakti Academy. Ms. Cheryl Banwarilal, Mr. Piyush Kandelwal, distinguished guests and online members. Welcome to today's celebration of International Photography Day with the theme being a story behind my photo in India. August 19th is celebrated globally as World Photography Day, an annual worldwide celebration. The day is dedicated to the art, craft, science, and history of photography. In the modern world, the World of Photography Day aims to inspire photographers across the planet to share a single photo with a simple purpose of sharing their world in with the world. Since the ex existence of cameras, photography was the medium of communication, restoring history. In the early 19th century, photography was also became a medium of personal expression, wherein a photograph captures a place, an experience, an idea, or a moment in time. It is for this reason that it is said that a picture is worth a thousand words. However, going back to its origin, the World Photography Day originated from the invention of the daguerreotype, a photographic process developed by Frenchman Louis Degra and Joseph Nicafore Nepis in 1837. On 9th January 1839, the French Academy of Sciences announced the process and on August 19, 1839, the French government announced the invention as a gift free to the, free to the world. The first durable color photogra uh, photograph was taken by Thomas Dutton in 1861. On the other hand, the first digital photograph was taken in 1957, almost 20 years before Kodak's engineer invented the first digital camera. However, it was much later, on August 19, 2010, the World Photo Day hosted its first global online gallery. People around the globe have been celebrating World Photography Day ever since. Joining us today are a set of people sharing with us their journeys through their cameras. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Kamal Maharaj, CEO and founder of Vishwa Shakti Academy for his remarks. Namaste, uh, Dr. Yogi. Just, uh, Cheryl, thank you so much for this great opportunity. I must thank the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center based at the Indian Consulate Delhi on this uh, uh, great observation of International Photography Day. In, in fact, photography is in the whole world of adventures has now become a pivotal and important point. These days, photographs is available in the palm of your hands via your cell phones, or what we will, you may call it the mobile. So interesting events, stories, games of colors and light. As one of the most interesting and exciting forms of art, it appeared a long time ago and to this time has been greatly influencing the human life. Remember, just a simple photo can really influence somebody. Uh, you know, it's now believed that photography is a science that allows to record reality. Photography both as an art and a science, bringing both fields of work together. Of course, when we, because photography is an, an, an art, and because the style, technique, all that becomes a science, you can imagine that the person who is taking out the photo, uh, the photo they are definitely become the scientist artist. So the, they become an inventor, they become a scientist, 
they are at, at times they are also an engineer. So yes, we are all accustomed to by taking pictures, we capture the best moments of our life. And photographs help to recall the events of the past. However, there is much more to tell. A photographer is a painter who depicts his life on a canvas by conveying certain emotions or experiences. Now, you, you know, uh, whether it is sport, a cricket match, or a soccer game, or, or you, you're going on a safari, or, or you looking at the colors, or a festival, Deepavali, Christmas, or whatever festival you are looking at, when you observe these, you want to capture them. And that is when the camera comes out of your pocket. As I said, you, you just carry it with you all the time. And nowadays, almost every second person is interested in taking out photos. However, the person who takes it to the next level becomes this excellent scientist, at the same time, a great artist. So we cannot always be sure whether a photograph reflects reality. With the highest accuracy, uh, accuracy or vice versa, we, we can even manipulate, we can hide stuff. We can, make, we, we can play on the emotions of somebody. So, so, you know, journalists do this, uh, and, and I must ask the journalists for forgiveness. They can take out a particular photo from a particular angle to depict a type of emotion that they want to, to read us. It is not necessarily what the readers want to watch. So, uh, definitely, the artist and the science, the scientist in you comes to play. So, journalists, uh, whether they're taking off uh, photographs of sporting events, like for example, if your sport hero is, is on the field, you want to make sure that you take out a photograph that is excellent. But if at that point of time, the, uh, the sport uh, artist, that the, the player that is going through some tremendous pressure from the community, you'll find that the photographer will take out a photo and you'll wait for that moment when he makes a mistake so that he corners him. So, so you can see uh, photography has its own uh, ability to convey messages. In addition to representing reality, photography is also important in other areas of human life. For example, in the world of commerce, a photograph can play a key role in influencing consumers or clients or forming the reputation of particular brand of company. Now we know, you know, when, when you go to buy, for example, a burger, the, the picture that's shown on, on, the, on the screen is perfect. But when the burger comes on your plate, it is something else. So it is perception versus reality. A photograph can be used to market something. And photographs have a huge emotional impact on people, making them experience particular sort of emotion. You know, if you want somebody to visit a place, you can easily, let's use the word Photoshop, the photo. Put it on and you can create such a beautiful uh, scenery. That, but when you go there, you see something completely different. Yet on the other hand, there are those photographers that send out the real signal. You know, when they're capturing uh, beautiful moments, when they're capturing the realities of, of life, for example, hunger, war, or on the other hand, uh, beauty pageants, where they capture the actual moments. Not everyone gets a chance to see that. And when they capture these actual, actual moments, they share this with the world. So the value of the image is determined by its color, its uniqueness, its charm, and also practical meaning. If the power of the photo, of photograph is so great that it can make people think something or compare or connect themselves with the objects depicted on it, it is regarded as a very valuable thing.
I remember one photo where a vulture, uh, this was, uh, it was a hunger story in one of our African countries. The vulture was uh, standing nearby a very, very hungry child, a famine-stricken country. And that, that, of course, the photographer believed he couldn't take the pressure of taking it. He won an award for that. But the message it conveyed to the world, it was what was happening in that country. Just, just that one picture. So, yes, to take a good photo, a person doesn't need to put much effort. He, she only has to find the perfect light background and add a little creativity. So it's an easy art form. It is, it is not complex, like where you have to have a con canvas and you have to have the paintbrush and pencils and you have to really be uh, an artist. This type of art is easy for people to put into practice. For some people, the shooting time or locations will be enough to make conclusions for Different people see photographs in different ways. We all know the um, common saying that, uh, you know, a picture or photograph speaks a thousand words. But it also hides a lot of reality. I think we need to add. So very often a, a photograph is a powerful weapon to influence groups of people. As mentioned previously, you do not always know the truth behind a photograph. Therefore, many phot photographers take the use of it to control the vulnerable people. In addition, people with different ideologies interpret images in their own ways. Sometimes they may not understand the meanings well. And we see this when you are, when people are trying to promote, a, a, uh, you know, some form of propaganda against any event or country, they will doctor a photograph and then put it up to show people listen meanwhile it was uh, it was doctored it was a, it was photoshopped yet the truth is hidden and how, how do we get there for while we admire photos look beyond the photo we must try and see it's just like when you're reading something you got to read behind between the lines so for photographs we need to look beyond the photo we cannot just allow ourselves to get influence so the desire to preserve now the beauty in photos let's take for example nature now this is uh, always difficult uh, to want to doctor that normally when you find a beautiful scenery of an animal or of trees or flowers, you want to capture that full moment. And not many people want to interfere with that. So once again, nature comes out tops. Uh, na na people want to show nature as it is. But when it comes to human life, people want to interfere with that because they want to send a different message. So the feeling has created an amazing form of art when it comes to capturing nature. Of course, the history of photography is an exciting history of the origin and the realization of the dreams of fixing long-term pres preservation of images. Not even videos can capture that. Only a, a photo can capture that. And uh, which surround us and the phenomena of objects. Now, we have seen how photographers, and I'm talking about the excellent ones, you will see the shades of light that they are able to take out certain objects or certain angles of nature. They look so beautiful, like the sun setting. Not many people can capture that. And, and when you see that on, on, a, on an advert, and you know, uh, uh, tourism companies buy those, uh, and they put it up, watch the sunset in a so and so place. And you want to go and see that sunset, but when you go there, you have to you have to have the eye of the of the photographer, and you have to wait for that special moment. Uh, it's just like any art, uh, any enthusiastic art form. 
the the photograph just doesn't appear you have to be patient you have to wait and then capture the moment and that that itself shows uh you know it's an art form it's a science that in itself that develops and i want to use the word yoga here it develops the attitude of yoga because you have to learn concentration patient and you have to know when this is the beautiful aspect of photography i know when i was young uh, i wanted a camera i would go around clicking but i had to be careful that you know you could not just click anyone when you're young uh, person and some of them don't take so you, when you when you realize for example you will it say you just want to pick people saying fruits and vegetables not everyone's happy but some name people are so with permission you can capture but when it comes to nature you don't need permission nature belongs to everyone and that's when the yogi attitude comes into you you can just sit quietly meditate and find that moment and capture it so yes uh of course research in this area is is not really um come about I, i'm so glad that the swami vivekananda the cultural center has worked on this maybe something that we need to look at for future we need to get people pull out the cell phones and go around clicking and then maybe we can get the best photos on on our next year's program um photography as an art is a, you know the number of shots the speed the playback all that has to be taken into consideration i would i would like to point out that photography can become a beautiful hobby it can actually become an opportunity to get the especially moving away from the vices when you fruitfully occupied and you are looking for beautiful moments and when you trying to capture the realities of life your mind gets busy meaningfully and you can imagine then you're not going to be looking at the vices thank you so much on all the best on this great day international photography day namaste thank you so much mr kamal maharaj for that deep insight on photography moving on to our program we have a set of dynamic young individuals capturing deep moments from their hearts in incredible india our first guest artist is ms candis lungelo sanders hi everybody i'm um, speaking to candis sanders i'm just going to share a couple of pictures that i've um taken throughout the journey of mine in india I've been an ISA student for 5 years. Um I did my undergrad in Hyderabad um since 2014 to, to to since 2013 to 2016. Then I then did my masters since 2000 um 17 to 2019. This is basically pictures of me and some of the experiences I've had in India. So first picture is me on um basically on a rock in Manipal. Um Manipal beach is one of the beautiful places you could actually visit in India and I urge many people to actually try and and, and see it. This was close to um an a lighthouse and it was such an amazing journey. Okay, picture number 2 is basically me at um a high school in Hyderabad. So, um despite um being a student um you also get the opportunity to go on trips where you um tell about your life in your world your country you come from and basically share with other people so this is a clap talk that i did with fisa b um which is a which is a federation that you join as a foreign student which helps you navigate life in india also um 
you know, they have a lot of activities that they introduce that help you actually travel more and see the rest of the place. So this is a school in Kachiboli, Hyderabad, um, where um, we basically teach little kids about where we come from, the differences in culture, and um, who we are as individuals. Thank you so much, Candice G. That was such a beautiful journey indeed. Next is Miss Marisha Lala, sharing her experience through her camera. Namaste, I'm Marisha Lala. When browsing through my India albums of a couple of thousand photos to find the one to talk about for International Photography Day, I knew it was going to be difficult. There's so much I love about India, from the Jhumkas to the Kangans to the Lengas and Bindis, to capturing the kids playing in the streets, to the stunning architecture, to the food, to pretty much the beauty in everyday life. Then I came across this one, taken on my birthday in 2007, in a gao in rural Goa. We had just experienced the true hospitality of Indian people at one of the flower farms, at a school and by the local fishermen plying their daily trade at the local river. They all paid homage to the saying, Atiti Devo Bhava, which means guest is God. We were then garlanded by the locals and the school choir erupted into happy birthday. They even raided the school gardens to make up a bouquet for me. We then moved on to visiting the village panchayat where the local self-government structures exist in many Indian subcontinents. I was a journalism student at the time, and of course we were on a scholarship where the project for our paper was titled Strengthening Democracy in Rural India Through the Empowerment of Women and Youth. And so, this was a perfect stop in so many ways. Now, Panchayati Raj is one of the oldest systems of local government in India. The word Panchayat means assembly of five, and Raj means rule. Now, traditionally, panchayats consisted of elderly and wise people chosen by the local community, and they are used to settle disputes between uh, the villages. The leader of the panchayat is called the Sarpanch and is generally the most senior person in the Gao. The elders took us through a beautiful history and politics uh, lesson. They told us about how they wanted to make a difference in their communities. And the reason this picture stands out for me is the similarity of sorts to our local ward councillor system in South Africa. I was particularly amazed at the process of election um, and particularly at the, the respect the system is given. It is hoped that these closer to home structures aid the people they serve at higher levels to ensure better living for all. I hope it aids the process of democracy and allows the voices of all people to be heard. Jai Hind. Thank you, Marisha Ji. That was so lovely. Next is talented Shloni Pani from Tetua with this time not a guitar, but a camera. The greatest days I had in India was visiting Guwahati. So we went to the airport and took a trip. Ooh, exciting trip. Uh, going to Shillong. <laughs> the road was super, 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 super long, you see. Um, everything was amazing there. We ate at the restaurant and see the lakes, the most beautiful lakes you have ever seen. Wow, this place was made for me. The place and people were so friendly there. They were selling us sweets. And we arrived in Shillong, Woo! the beautiful place I've ever seen in India, you see. Uh, first of all, I was, I was charmed by the cars, they were so tiny, I was like, wow, this part of the world is so amazing. And then we went to Yalana Hotel, yes. <laughs> uh, Yalana Hotel was, was so epic, you see guys, <laughs> I've made friends there. Um, we sang, uh, we sang songs and uh, we, we went inside and it was so white. I even took pictures there. <laughs> it was so amazing. And the Wi-Fi, I was, I was super excited uh, chatting with family and enjoying the view. You see, uh, Guwahati is so beautiful, guys. So beautiful. 
the outside look. Wow. And then the last, Vivanta Hotel. <laughs> yeah, Vivanta Hotel, they gave me a warm welcome there. They even put a dot on my forehead. And I was busy telling people here in South Africa that I've got married. I'm never coming back. Yeah, I enjoyed my indoor space very alone there enjoying the view uh of made pictures as you see i've edited inside india and sent it to my friends in south africa and they were so amazed <laughs> and they were so amazed you see um yeah and this was the view man wow looking at the sun and the parkings you see uh looking at that orange building there i was so charmed and then at night and then at night bro so something i've ever seen I've, i even made a song and sent it to south africa that i'm getting married and i'm never coming back enjoy here it is enjoy <laughs> hello south africa yeah man i wanna tell you that i'm getting married in india showcase i'm not coming back <laughs> you won't see me no more no more oh, okay. i I'm not coming back. Yeah, guys, uh, so uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for viewing my video. And I'm not coming back. Thank you so much, Mr. Shlonipani. That was so profound and so beautiful. Our next guests are Miss Vish. Vishanti Edward and Mr. Desigan Edward sharing their experience and journeys throughout India. Namaste. My name is Desigan Edward and on the occasion of International Photography Day, I would like to share an experience of a photo that I have taken at the Shivoham Shiva Temple in Bangalore. This temple is a famous Hindu temple which features a 65 feet tall idol of our Hindu deity Lord Shiva. Now this photo has been taken with my sister which I, I can say has special meaning to me because um, family means everything to me and spiritually we follow Lord Shiva and which Lord Shiva being at his feet with my sister there was a really great experience for me. Namaste, I am the sister Vishantini Edward. I would like to add my experience as extremely precious and memorable as both my brother and I are Bharadenatyam dancers and this is the way we've bonded growing up since childhood. As my brother mentioned, just being at the Lord's feet made us both feel immensely blessed and happy. On that note, I would like to say Om Namah Shivaya. Thank you so much, uh, Vishanti ji and Desigan ji, for that beautiful journey. Our next guest is Mr. Lucky Mugudulu Lel. Hi, my name is Lucky Makutuela from South Africa. I want to share this video about my experience in India. Look at my photo. This is my photo. This is the first day when I arrived in India. I arrived in India on 2015, July 10. This is the Mumbai airport. When I was in India, I realized that India was a good country because there is a low crime rate. You can go with your phone, then no one will rob you, and you can also go at any time in India. And another thing I like in India, India has very good in technology. When I search the country which has good in technology, I realized that it's India, so I was wanted to experience it by going there and studying. India is also low rate of unemployed people. Most of people are working there. They can also even do their own business because there are also there are many people doing street business there for selling food and and so on. And the young people in India they like to study. They also do postgraduate studies. Yeah, that's all. That's what I like in India. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucky G. That was so beautiful. Joining us as well is Miss Rasmi Singh for her journey. Hello, everybody. My name is Rasmi. I'm from Durban, South Africa. 
happy International Photography Day. The story behind my picture in India is about my graduation. I have been blessed with the opportunity to study a master's degree at Indian Academy Degree College affiliated to Bangalore University in India. I was an ICCR scholarship student and I lived in India from 2015 to 2017. This photo for me represents not just acquiring a Masters of Commerce degree but also acquiring so much more knowledge not just academics, not just finance or banking or commerce but being street smart, learning how to communicate with people from all over the globe even if there's a language barrier. It, this represents my lifelong friendships with people all over the, the globe who I meet and speak to even up to today. I am so grateful for this and this one photo brings back thousands of memories that I could go on and on about. This represents opportunities are possible, things can happen, miracles can happen, and your life can be changed in a split second and changed for the better. I'm so grateful for my time in India and for all the memories because it made me a better person and it taught me things I would not have learned if I had stayed here in my home in Durban. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity and I can't wait to visit India again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Rasmi Ji. That was so beautiful and so incredible. We would like to now welcome Ms. Natalie Inkosi to share her remarkable experiences through her camera with us. Hi guys, my name is Natalie Inkosi. I'm from Durban, ICCR's former students. I graduated last year in Pune University, which was the most incredible moment ever to actually graduate in a foreign country. Awesome, hey? Talk about my experience when I went to Goa. Actually, my friend invited me to her home, of which it was really, really sweet. And I went there, the family is so good, was so good to me actually. Uh, like I felt at home, like Goa is really like Durban, hey? Like you're taking Durban to India. It's like I'm in India and then I go to Goa and then I feel like I'm in Durban, actually at home where I come from. It's a very, really, it's a very like uh, fun city or they call it states actually. We, we, we all, like here we say city, but there they say state. And uh, it's very cool. It's very, it's very chilled actually. So we went to the park, we went to the beach, uh, we went to, uh, it's, it's, yeah. It, it's crazy how many churches they have. It's crazy how many beach they have. Like you have the south, you have the north. I went to the south. I didn't get a chance to go to the north. So we took some really cool pictures as friends. And I would really, really love to go there. I really love to go there again, like go back. Um, so it was really, really nice experience. I actually like Goa. I'm in love with Goa. The food, you know and the culture <laughs> the people the warm that you feel the, yeah you actually feel welcome you actually feel belong thank you thank you so much natalie g that was really really picture perfect our next guest is mr brentley naika good day everybody my name is Brentley Naika and I am a South African ICCR international student currently studying in India. So the following picture which you can see was taken out recently 
while I was assisting the Akshay Patra Foundation in the COVID-19 relief program. Serving the foundation in my spare time has been a really nice experience. I am amazed at the commitment and effort that the Akshay Patra Foundation puts in to ensure that no one goes hungry during this pandemic. The Akshay Patra Foundation also has a midday meal program for school children. Just a little more information about the Akshay Patra Foundation. The Akshay Patra Foundation was founded in the year 2000 by the temple president of ISKCON Bangalore. He is Grace Madhu Pandit Dasa. Today, the Akshay Patra Foundation is the world's largest midday meal program which serves a wholesome meal every school day to just over 1.8 million children all across India. The Akshay Patra Foundation has 60 plus kitchens all across India which cooks meals every day for children. I have visited Akshay Patra kitchens in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Vishakhapatnam and Delhi. What I saw astounded me. I never before witnessed such an efficient facility dedicated entirely to making food. I was amazed with the strictness of the hygiene level. No food comes in direct contact with either human hand. The basic nutritional essentials, which is rice, sambar, dal and curd, for thousands of children in the span of just a few hours. The taste of the food is also of utmost importance and children every day are asked to rate their meal. Good day everybody. My name is... Thank you so much Brentley G. That is so beautiful. We would like to now welcome Nonchlanchla Dadla. Happy photography day everyone. This is your boy Ntlalontle from uh, Peter Morris back, born and bred and uh, grew up around this um, beautiful province called Kezaran. I'm also here to celebrate the Photography Day on behalf of ICCR as one of the people who were fortunate enough to get a scholarship through the program of going to study abroad. So I was lucky enough to be selected to go and pursue my MBA in finance and marketing. So I did that for, for two years in, uh, in Bangalore, India. It's actually one of the beautiful uh, cities in, in Asia. And it's regarded as the Silicon Valley of, of India and uh, other tiger in, uh, nations in, in Asia. So today I'll be talking about my picture. It's a photo which was took in Bangalore, one of the temples there. One of the, it's actually one of the biggest temples in, in the world. It's called Krishna Temple. So I was there in 2018, February 12th, just a week before my birthday. And I had decided to take uh, myself out just to celebrate, you know, um, myself because it was actually the last year of, of my study. So I wanted to explore the spiritual um, mosaic scheme of things within, within the country. And I started that expedition of going around visiting um, temples. And on that day, it was uh, quite a, a sunny day. I was there by myself. I decided to just go out and the picture was actually taken by one of the tourists his name um i forgot his name but it was just he was also there to explore the the temple and uh, we actually spent almost the entire day there um meditating meeting up with people uh chanting some hindi songs and actually sharing um philosophy and a number of things with people who were there so it was quite a great experience the temple inside it's it's beautiful but you're not we were not able to take pictures 
inside the temple it's prohibited like you can't do that so you can only take pictures outside but the interior is is is, is quite beautiful it's covered in gold silver and a whole lot of other beautiful metals so thanks guys for the opportunity to share my story and uh, talk about the picture i hope you guys will have a great day enjoy the entire photographic day i hope we could be together but you know the covid is not ex is not like giving us a, an opportunity to spend time together so wherever you are enjoy your photographic day take as many pictures as possible and then maybe you can find some other platforms where we can share such great stories thank you very much bye thank you so much Nanshlanshlaji, for your experiences and journeys next is miss yashika ramdeo to share her experience with us you cannot travel, but here are my photos for your imagination of the incredible India. Climb along my train of thought and we shall travel places your tour guide would have never taken you. I am Yastika and I've spent four years in Bangalore studying hotel management via an ICCR scholarship. I am a proud South African. Bangalore is a city filled with diversity. The weather is amazing and anyone in Bangalore would tell you, give me some sunshine, give me some rain, come to Bangalore and you get it all in a day. You will find hundreds of international students in Bangalore because of the great climate. I probably met people from more than 30 countries and that kind of interaction taught me that the world is filled with people who just need understanding. The Indian culture is everywhere and it catches your eye. Indians are so grateful for the life that they have. They love celebrating every moment, whether they are rich or whether they are poor, they love people. Weddings are never just for the RSVP guests. They are for you, your friends, and even your friends' families. They are always for everyone and there is always enough for everyone. When you ask me what I love the most about India, I would say, the food oh the flavors you can try everything from deliciously sweet to mind-blowing spicy every state has their own flavors kerala uses coconut in almost every dish leaving toasty creamy flavors everywhere hyderabad has the best spiced chai kolkata with amazingly delicious desserts and Charts are so common in the north of India with tantalizing tastes of sweet, sour, spicy, and even bitter all in one dish. All the street food. On any day, street food gives you the best feeling when you travel. Besides for loving food, traveling through India is the cheapest and most convenient. My family traveled to India twice and the budget was so low but still manageable because I found lots of ways to travel easy and cheap. I traveled to so many places and some of them being Mangalore, Kerala, Chikmangalur, Mumbai where I landed most of my cheap flights and I planned a trip with my college mates to Chikmangalur. It was a short trip but the first trip I planned for 20 people. The nature we found there was exhilarating and something we needed before our exams. Goa was my last destination and when I arrived there, I felt like I was in a different country or that was some part of Europe and I understood why lots of Europeans travel to Goa backpacking because the city is absolutely clean and all the people speak English. It was foremost the best city I ever visited. India is filled with beauty, adventure, shopping, the safest streets to walk on, rich history, and lots and lots of people to learn from. When I look back at what I learned the most, it was when I was interning. I was given a bigger picture on life and finally realized that my creativity and my ideas can be acknowledged by the world. Working made me confident. My working experience was so much more joyful because the people I worked with all became my family. Even working in India was so welcoming. 
I will always love India for their culture, unconditional welcoming, and how they treat a guest as God. I've been given this treatment so many times and so has my family. It just touches your heart in a kind of way that you cannot explain and you can only feel. The only thing you need when you travel to India is an open mind and an understanding that life can be lived in so many other ways. Namaskaram. Whenever you feel depressed or stuck, go through all of your photographs and you will be reminded of all the adventure world in your life. You will be motivated instantly. Happy International Photography Day and always remember that the importance and the value of a photograph can only be known by the beholder. Every photograph has a story. Thank you so much, Yashika Ji, for your profound experience and journey. We would like to now welcome Mr. Rich Inkevo Ngoma for his beautiful memory lane experience in India. Greetings to everyone. My name is Nrebo Rechim Goma. I'm from the township called Umlazin in Wazulu Natal. I'm an ICR scholar currently in Hyderabad. I'm in a college called Needham College. I'm doing a BBA in tourism and hospitality. It's been a pleasure for me to be here and to do this course as well. I would like to thank ICCR for giving me this opportunity of being here and to study this course which I'm doing now. I'm in my final year. I've been here since 2017 July. I came here right after finishing my matric. I finished my matric in 2016 then after receiving my results in 2017, I heard about the scholarship, so I did apply. Lucky enough, I was granted the opportunity to come to India to study. And I had a great time, and I'm still having a great time ever since I came. India has been very good to me. It taught me a lot of things, including being independent, uh, staying away from home, to be responsible, to communicate with others, meeting people from different places. I've met people from Africa, different countries, Asian countries, European countries. It's, it's a good experience for me. It's been a very massive experience and apart from that experience, I've learned a lot of things that they helped me to grow in person. There was even this internship I attended last year in a company called Asia Hyderabad. In that company, they helped me a lot. I learned a lot in that company. Because now I have an idea how to run a business and how can I start my own business. With the short of six months, I work there with that company. Thank you so much, Rich, Rich, Rich Chi, for that inspiring journey. Our next guest is going to share his journey with us through his camera. And that is Mr. Cesare Ngobane. Greetings to everyone. My name is Usize Wagangobane. Um, I'm from Nkandla. I was born and bred in an area called Nkandla, in one of the deep rural areas. Uh, I'm currently under ICCR scholarship. I'm enrolled in BSc Computer Science. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my third year. I've been here for like full two years now, and I'm, I'm doing the my third year. This is the third year. I'm after I've started with my third year now. So, yeah, guys, as you can see, uh, India also has a good side. Uh, as you can see on the video, uh, we have some good times and we have enjoyed being around. 
uh, here in India. Uh, as you can see, sometimes we'll go to the mountains just to relax, just to have some fun. And uh, as you can see here, <laughs> On the other one, uh, I was with my friends. It was on the 16th of June, so we decided to go out and uh, have fun, take pictures on the 16th of June, as you can see on, on the videos. And uh, I, I met some uh, South African guys, uh, which I'm staying with here in India. Uh, so, yeah, it has been good. It has been good, and it has uh, taught me so much. India has taught me so much. There's so much that I've learned uh, here in India, like being independent. Uh, being able to, to, to plan your things, uh, being able to budget, uh, and also education is, is education here, it's, 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 it's not difficult, if I can say it that way, it, 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 it's not, there are challenges, but education is accessible to everyone, um, I'll count things like books are not expensive here, so it's easy to get textbook and you just study at home so yeah it has been good being around here in india uh, as i've explained earlier on and we have celebrated we have celebrated birthdays together here sometimes we'll come together just to have uh, just to chill together in the house and um, maybe cook share meals together have drinks if and have drink some of the days yes some of the days then we just have fun play games uh, we do all the funny things together whenever we are together we'll always make sure that we enjoy so it's a lifetime experience uh, there's so much that i've learned so far thank you so much Thank you so much, Caesar G. That was so beautiful. Next, joining us is Miss Mikaela Chetty to share her very deep and profound experiences through the camera in India with us. Greetings, all. My name is Mikaela Chetty. I'm currently an ICCR scholar at Goa University studying MSc Zoology. In this photo, you can see that um, we went on the Trion Trek. It was a group of friends and myself. So Trion Trek is in Himachal Pradesh state. We got down at Patan Kant Station, which is in Punjab state of India. It's very near to the border. So from the station, Patan Kot Station, we took a cab to Dharamshala. And uh, in Dharamshala, we went so touring for some time and then we went on um so trion trek is a very popular trek in himachal pradesh it's very simple comparatively to the rest and you can see the the haludara ranges in the pig background those are the mountains in the back and uh it's you basically trekking in the himalayas so it's a very beautiful trek, it's very pictorious and there's lots of scenery and animals and it's a beautiful trek. We went in the month of June, so the weather was very pleasant and it wasn't hot, it wasn't cold, but we did experience a little bit of snow. Very little bit, only when we reached to the top. The trail to Triund is short, but it isn't that steep. The steep climb is more towards the top and there are many birds in the forest of the trail which makes it very beautiful and a zoologist bird watcher's delight. It takes about uh, four to six hours to reach the top and come back down but there is an option for you to stay overnight on top in a tent which they hire out to you and they do provide food. It's Rajma Chawal, Dal Chawal. Those are the two basic meals that they provide. So because there's... Um... The 
The tree and trek has a beautiful stunning sunset and that you can see between the ranges of the mountains and the sun falls beautifully showing some golden lights hitting the mountain ranges and just sinks between the mountain valleys. So it's very beautiful to look at and it's a beautiful experience of fresh air and a beautiful sunrise that rises magnificently between the mountains. Uh, the the journey starts from Dharamkot to Triund, so that is about five to six kilometers. So, it takes about plus minus four hours if you're really fit and active, and you're not stopping halfway to take pictures. Otherwise, it's six hours. You do get a checkpoint in the beginning, so they check your bags and stuff. It's strictly no littering and no pollution because uh, you have to bring back everything that you've taken up with you it gets accounted for. There are temples along the way and there's a shops for drinks and snacks. Uh, there's a Galudevi temple that you'll be seeing when you reach halfway. So that's a beautiful sight as well. The, the dense oak forest transverse in the steep side of the Laka Ridge so you see beautiful greenery emerges from all sides. There are cafes on this road highway up there. And um, it's a beautiful place for you to take pictures at all the cafes, Shiva Cafe especially. Beautiful sight. When you reach the top, so we stayed overnight on the tree and mountain ranges, the trek. Uh, it was beautiful sight. We stayed awake the whole night and danced under the stars and sang songs. It was um, a lovely memory that I would definitely do again. The, the landscape is very smooth. There's no landslides. There's no water buildup, nothing. And thankfully in June, the weather was very pleasant. Not too hot, not too cold. So we had just the right amount. Um, the tents were very good, they were insulated and it gave a good view of the scenery. Thank you so much, Mikaela Ji. That was so beautiful. And lastly, but not least, is Miss Courtney Celeste Patel, taking us through incredible India through her exotic journey. When someone asks me where is heaven on earth, I'll show them this picture. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Courtney Celeste. I was awarded a scholarship at the Durban Consulate in South Africa in 2016 to study in India. India has such marvellous sights. It's such a pity that media only chooses to show us the poverty aspect to India. Their culture is so rich it's incomparable to anything of the West. My soul feels at peace in this land. There is indeed something so magical about the serenity in India, in spite of the bustle and the current, fast-paced, growing development of the country. Mysore is one of the cleanest cities in India. The roads are so polished that you wouldn't even mind laying flat on the sidewalk and catching a quick nap. With an average of 6 million visitors a year, Mysore Palace is the second most visited monument in India after the Taj Mahal. The Mysore Palace was built during the reign of the Wadia dynasty, who hired a British architect in 1897 to design the palace in a way that blends Hindu, Muslim, Rajput and Gothic styles. I paid an entrance fee of only $1 which is equivalent to about 17 South African rands, for a royal experience that will surely linger in my mind for a lifetime. Carry your nebulizer in your pocket because the interior design of the pillars and walls are so intricate that it will surely take your breath away. Visitors were not allowed to take any pictures of the palace inside, but the Durbanite rebel within me couldn't resist capturing the essence of the ancient beauty. 
I was able to see real items that were used by the kings and queens of that era of the 19th century, such as their daily cutlery. The palace is open all week long and is protected by 12 temples along the large gardens. At night, the palace is fully illuminated. These pictures don't do justice to just how remarkable the site really was. If you're looking for some travel blog worthy photographs, add Mysore Palace to your bucket list. Happy World Photography Day! Thank you so much, Courtney G. That was so inspiring. We've come to the conclusion of today's really picturesque program, but please stay tuned uh, with us to see what's happening next at Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban. I would like to now welcome my colleague, Ms. Cheryl Banwari Lal, to render this afternoon's vote of thanks. On behalf of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban, I would like to express our deep gratitude to Mr. Kamal Maharaj from the Vishwa Shakti. I would like to express our deep gratitude to Miss Candice Lungile Saunders. I would like to express our deep gratitude to Miss Medisha Lala. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Mr. Hanipani Mitato. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Miss Vishanti Edward and Mr. Desigan Edward. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Mr. Lucky Magundulal. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Ms. Rasmi Singh. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Ms. Natalie Nkosi. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Mr. Brentley Nyker. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Ladone Nadadla. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Ms. Yashika Ramdu. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Mr. Rich in, in Koboy Magoma. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Ms. Michaela Chetty. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Ms. Courtney Celeste Patel. I would like to express our deep gratitude and say thank you to Mr. Siswe Inkobani. I would like to express our deep gratitude to Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Director Swami Vivekananda Kasha Center. I would like to express my deep gratitude and say thank you to Ms. Shasti Harinarayan for being our lovely MC. I would like to say thank you to Mr. Piyush Khandewal for all the technical support. Thank you and stay home.